Let's talk about JavaScript enums in about five minutes. What's up, everyone? My name is James Q. Quick, and I do weekly videos about web development related topics. And a lot of what I do is talk about vanilla JavaScript and basics of JavaScript. I want to talk about something that you may have heard of, but you may not actually really know what it is. And that is an enum in JavaScript. Actually, enums don't really exist in JavaScript, but you can kind of create them yourself. They exist in TypeScript. I may show you an example of that here in a second. But basically what an enum is, is a way for you to define or enumerate all the different choices that you may have for a certain thing. So what are a couple of examples of that? Well, you may have a game state enum. And so the state of a game can be not started, playing, paused, finished as an example. And you only want the states to be one of those four different states, nothing else. And you can control this in code by making sure that when you set this game state, you're only looking at those values that you've enumerated that you selected as your options. You can think of this as like a select in a dropdown. For example, you have all the options, but you can only choose one and you can't choose anything else. So that's really quickly what an enum is. Let's actually take a look at this in code so we can see an example. All right, so I've got open VS code and I am using the Quokka extension inside of VS code to use this as a live scratch pad for JavaScript. So check out Quokka. I've got a video on this that you can check out if you're interested. So inside of uh, this uh, kind of scratch pad for JavaScript, let's say I want to keep track of game states like we were talking about. And so we can have the game start as something as in a state that's not started yet. Then we click the play button and now it becomes playing and then we finish and now it's done and maybe we have a pause in there. So you could do something like, let's say we have a uh, game state variable and let's say uh, it's gonna start as not started. And then we do some, do some things, start the game and then we wanna update. Uh, since we wanna update this, we'll do it as a let instead of a const. And then we'll say game state equals uh, playing, all right? And then we finish the game, for example, and then we update game state to be uh, finished or something like that, doesn't really matter. So the problem with this is if you're having to repeat updating this game state in different places, you may mistype the state if you're then checking to see if game state equals uh, not started, do something, you may mistype it, you may select the wrong state or something like that. So what you can do to help with that is to create an enum. So what would an enum look like? Well, you'd create a const variable and often you'll see this as uh, all uppercase with underscores for these constant values, for these constant variables. So we could call this enum game states and this will be an object. And so objects have key value pairs and we could have uh, the not started key and that will have a value of not started then we'll have a playing key and then we'll have a value of playing and then we'll have a finish with a value of finish so here are different game states and now when we go to update this we can say that game state is not just hard coded to not started we can choose from game states and then we can do dot to grab the actual value that we're looking for. So in this case, this would be not started. We could go and update this one to game states dot playing. And then we can go and update this one to game states dot finished. Now, the cool thing is you get IntelliSense for all these game states and you're not having to manually write this stuff out. Another cool thing is if you were to update one of these to capitalize this S, for example, so now if we change any of these values, the code will still work because we have them associated with these enum values. Now, the one thing we don't want to happen though is we don't want to let someone come in and say game states dot not started and then set this to something else. We want to prevent that from happening. We want to make sure that this game states value or the values associated with keys stay the same throughout the code and they can't be changed. So we want to actually freeze that object. So we can call object dot freeze on this and come and freeze this entire object, which means it will not then let this be updated. So if I log out game states dot not started, you can see, I guess it didn't throw an error here, but you can see that this value is still the same. It still says not started instead of something else. So we're freezing that object to make sure that even if we try to update it, the values associated with these keys are going to stay the same. 
So that is JavaScript, or that is how you create enums in JavaScript, even though they don't actually exist. Here's another good example that we use in the Compressed FM podcast website. Uh, the code behind the website is for the different URLs that we have. So obviously typing in URLs is an error prone process. It can get tedious and repetitive. Well, in this case, we create a constants variable here that is an object with those key value pairs. And then we freeze the, that thing so it can't be updated later on. And you can see we've got all of our social sites, our compressed stuff, our podcast URLs and things like that. If you're interested in the podcast, it's a weekly podcast about web development and web design with a little bit of zest. So make sure to go check it out at Compressed FM. But that is a good example of how we use enums in the Compressed FM website. Now, the last thing I want to show you is that even though we were kind of able to hack this together to create an enum in JavaScript, if you're using TypeScript, these are actual things that already exist. So you can declare an enum with a name and then have those key value pairs. The cool thing about this is if you don't assign a value, it'll just take the key and kind of replicate that as the value as well, similar to ES6 syntax with objects. So if you're using TypeScript, you can go ahead and use the built-in enum. If you're in JavaScript, you can go and create your own by creating an object with key value pairs and then freezing that object to make sure that it stays consistent throughout the entirety of your code. So that was enums in JavaScript in about five minutes. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks as always for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one.